Um, hi, I'm Natasha. Um, I'm 17 and I'm a student here at ISB. The topic that I want to talk about, I feel we're all guilty of this. Um, it's something that we do and engage into no matter what our morals are. Um, the topic I'm talking about are stereotypes and stigmas. Not the ones, however, related to schools like nerds and jocks. I'm talking about the ones fixated with emotions and sickness. Okay. Am I doing it right? <laughs> um, yeah, so what is a stigma? It's a very powerful social process that uses stereotyping, prejudice, discrimination, um, power to imbalance, and it can really hurt someone because what I'm talking about within mental illness is very negative. Um, maybe you've heard some of the stereotypes. Uh, you're so bipolar. Um, just stop being depressed. I'm so ADHD all the time in class. I'm so OCD. Everyone with depression takes medicine. Do these sound familiar? Anybody? Yeah? Exactly. Um, I bet you've heard these before in movies, classrooms, uh, within your friends, and all sorts of that. Maybe you've even said them yourself. I know I've said them myself. Um, but the truth is, mental health, mental illness, disorder, disease, and their terms are really serious, and they can cause big effects on people who have to deal with them. The conditions that come with these illnesses are very devastating because people who deal with this kind of stuff cannot cope with life as easily as other people because they're chemically wired differently than all of us. Everyone's chemically wired differently, but these people, so to say, just need a little bit more help than you do. How many of you here know someone who suffers with um, a mental illness or disorder? Yeah. Well, whether you do or not, you just met one. Hi. Um, I am clinically diagnosed with manic depressive disorder, anxiety in general um, disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, it's been five years for me now, and I'm still recovering. It's really hard to go through this, and I'm actually struggling to give this presentation. <laughs> um, but let me give you a background of where it all began. It started when I was eight. I had moved from a small island all the way to Europe. And thinking I'd get new experiences and really big things I could learn, I actually got something that I wasn't expecting, this illness. And it, it made me lose a lot of things. I lost my family. I lost the love and connection I had with them. I lost my friends. And I lost myself. And whether you know it or not, this disease starts young. Some people will come later in life, but it starts young. Um, and I, I kept trying seeing doctors. I saw therapists. I saw psychiatrics. Um, I took medicine for so many years, and it just didn't help. And when I turned 14, halfway through my ninth grade semester, I attempted my first suicide. Um, and I was sent away to the States to go into a residential treatment center for a year and seven days, from April 1st, 2013 to April 7th, 2014. Um, I was sent there because I was sick, I needed help, and I wanted to get better. And I'm sure everyone else who has to go through this wants to get better. Um, so I stand here in front of everybody that I've worked with, people I don't know that well, um, with the pressure of, will this stereotype ever end? Because I don't enjoy it. I don't like hearing in classes that this teacher is going to kill you because you don't hand an assignment. I've actually heard these things before. The other day a boy was like, I thought only girls got depressed. Like, really? Yeah, you were there, exactly. So, like, we're surrounded by these things, and it's just, it's no fun for me to listen to. <laughs> Good, we're laughing. I need a little bit of encouragement. <laughs> um, but as well as thinking that these stereotypes won't ever go away, that the people who have to deal with this kind of stuff are going to keep being afraid and they're going to keep staying inside and they're not going to come out. But I'm going to come out and I'm going to keep surviving and I'm going to show you guys it's not that bad. Um, you know, most people receive flowers, uh, get better cards, uh, visitors. But when I was in treatment, I got phone calls every week saying, perk up. Like, I didn't already think about that, you know. Um, but eventually, I really worked hard and that's why I really want to tell you guys why this is wrong to use these kind of terms and statements. Um, and if you look up here, 
these are just examples of what media, society, news stations, what they portray as mental patients, illnesses. I mean, how sexy is being a mental patient? Like, come on. <laughs> like, really? Um, and then some girl carrying a teddy bear. I mean, when you look at me when I was recovering, I looked nothing like that. I really didn't. I still don't look like that. Not do other patients ever look like that. And it's really disappointing because horror movies, horror films, videos, all sorts of stuff like that create characters like this to portray people like me. Portray people who are behind you, in front of you, who could be dealing with this kind of stuff. For example, look at this mental patient fancy dress costume. I mean, who, would want, who wouldn't want to be that for Halloween? It, it's ridiculous. I mean, covered in blood, have a machete. Do you see me walk into school like that? No. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's, it's shameful to me because I want to feel normal, but then I'm portrayed as this. And I'm, it's just really hard to deal with. Now that you've probably hopefully understood what I have to go through within the stigma, stereotypes, what my recovery was like. Um, I mean, not everybody's story is the same, but people will have very big ups, very big downs, and it just varies. And that's something important to keep in mind. Believe it or not, one in six adults are prone or living with a mental disease right now. One in fourth of adolescents are beginning to develop mental illnesses from situations of bullying, traumatic events. Maybe their brain was just chemically wired. These factors are continuous with genetics, environmental factors, all sorts of stuff. It's not just for attention. Because I used to be told that I did this for attention. Here is um, a survey that I found online, and it's a stigma. It shows how stigma impacts people. If you see, all of them are above 50%. That's a lot of people who are impacted by this. Almost 91% for the first survey that they believe negative stereotypes are associated with mental illness, and it very exists in society. 41% um, um, of people surveyed that chose not to tell certain people about their illness because of embarrassment. You shouldn't have to be embarrassed about this. 61% of people surveyed that chose not to sell, tell certain people about their illness because they feared the negative effects of the personal and professional life. That's me right now. I'm in a professional setting, and I'm telling you guys what I have to deal with. And it's scary. And for those that don't understand the difference between being sad and being depressed, let me explain to you. There's a thing called DSM, Diagnostical and Statistical Manual. It's where doctors are studying this sort of manual where they can de 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 how do you say the difference? De differentiate? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the difference is between how they diagnose a patient or not. Um, this is an example of what depression looks like. It has fluctuations of several moods, and normal waves are in the center, and mania is all the way at top. And that's just how different it is, because when you're depressed, you, you get very low, but you can also have really great highs. Maybe highs that go on for days, nights, but sometimes they go on for weeks where you just don't want to leave your bed. Um, Another example that I wanted to talk about um, is the word OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which is one of the diagnostics I am dealing with. Um, one of the terms I mentioned earlier was I'm so OCD. First of all, OCD is not an adjective. It really isn't. It, I have OCD. It's not I am so. Um, it's a general misconception because people like to think this term is related to being needy, being a clean freak, being so organized, but it's composed of so much more than that. People for hours on their day will do rituals and rituals of getting things done in order to not suffer from the severe anxiety of bad things occurring to them. I mean, I get up every day, I do the same thing in the morning, brush my teeth, get out of bed, tell myself, you're going to make it today, just so that I don't fear of breaking down in the morning and not coming to school, then not coming to school the next day, and missing all these opportunities of getting through high school. And it really is 100% out of my control, out of other people's control. It's not something we like to want to have as we're growing up, but 
thanks to doctors, therapists, supportive friends, we get through it. Um, and you know, everyone has these little rituals. Um, and, but it's just whether you got to know the difference. You got to know the difference between a depression and being sad. The difference between having OCD and just being clean. The difference between being afraid for this presentation than having anxiety. So now that I've established the stereotype of mental illness and why it's a prominent issue, I just have one simple course of action. Break the habit. Break the habit of using these terms in the wrong way using these terms in negative ways, whether you mean it or not. It just really does put an impact on people and it can change a lot of lives. I know for sure that when I grew up around 13, I had people call me an attention whore. I had people telling me that I was hurting myself over stupid reasons, that it was in the head, but it's not. And I want you guys to know that it's not like that. So think before you speak. Think before you use these terms. When you're with your friends and you hear somebody say something very impulsive, remind them properly and politely that it's not right to say that. So when you walk into school, remind yourself and think, maybe there's somebody behind you that deals with this kind of stuff and that they don't want to hear this kind of stuff when they go to school. I feel as though people in this situation really do deserve respect because it's not just in the mind. It's a sickness. I mean, just like cancer, cardiovascular disease, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, would you go up to someone and say, you're so heart disease, that's so heart disease, or like, the tumor is just in your head, it's not there? <laughs> exactly, would you actually say that? No, because it's real sickness. And the brain can get sick. I'm sure everyone here probably has family members, friends who do deal with this. Um, and we all deserve the same love no matter what we're going through. So I hope this really helped you guys think about it. Thank you.